welcome to the Dan Fan Channel. Today we are doing an indie comic review. So it's extra fun, extra special. And the comic that we're reviewing today is Fiendish by Renny Draws. Now fun fact, I actually meant to do a review on this a long time ago. Back when I first got it and first backed the campaign. But then I lost the books. <laughs> I was moving a ton of comics around and I misplaced them and it took me a while to actually find them again because obviously we, before you do a review you gotta do a reread through. And then while I was looking for the books I thought that I didn't have book two. I think I was just confused because she was also doing a campaign for the 2.5 comic which is supposed to be a side story and I don't typically read the side stories unless I'm you know, done the entire series and I'm desperate to read more material for this world. We're not at that point yet. But also, like, the first chapter of Fiendish is fairly short, so, like, in my head they were both one book. And I ended up getting another Fiendish too. Uh, but to be fair, I kinda like this cover better. So it all worked out in the end. I only bring this up to give a reason for why I haven't reviewed it already and to point out that, of course, I'm retarded. So now without further ado, let's get into the review of Fiendish. Maybe just by the art style alone, I kind of expected this to be more of a shonen -y type of comic series and I was really surprised to open it up and find that it's actually more so dark fantasy and not exactly made for teenagers, as there is a lot of gore, a lot of cursing, and some titties. In fact, within like the first two pages, we get nipple. I'm not opposed to nipple, of course, just was not expecting it. We start off chapter one with our main characters Kaz and Iskul. Iskul is Kaz's cousin, and he's been cursed ever since he was little. There's a mystery behind how he was cursed or why he has it. But he has the ability to touch someone and relive their worst memory with them. So it affects both him and the people that he touches. And this of course causes him to have a lot of empathy for people because he always sees them going through their worst experiences and you know, he kind of figures, oh, I feel bad for this person. <laughs> Which does create interesting moral dilemmas with this character. Now in this first chapter, they're hunting down a monster which can suck out the life and mummify people. They come across these traveling... can I say gypsy? They come across these traveling, not suspicious carnival folk and are attacked by said monster. They die, but their day of slave girl survives. Now I will say they do have a little bit of nuance to the I keep this particular fantasy race as my slave. In this particular instance, they were actually like family to her and treated her well. But it does seem like the world, or at the very least this particular country, kind of treats this fantasy race as though they are just made to be pets or, or slaves to a house. Is there a reason for this? I don't know. And the fact that they look like demons, I guess is coincidental. Are they, are they actually supposed to be demons? I sure hope not. I don't know if I've ever officially given my stance on demons, but I'm on Freeran's side. Admittedly, I'm a little bit confused on the first chapter just because the whole hook of it is that they're hunting this monster and then by the time when they're finally approached by this monster and they're given the chance to fight it, Kaz has this inner dialogue where he's like, what am I doing? I can't fight this thing. And it's like, what do you mean you can't fight? You, you, you were hunting it without a plan to actually kill it? You know, it, it's amazing how like one little snippet of dialogue can really turn an entire story on its head because immediately that one snippet of dialogue made it feel like the whole book made no sense. Just the fact that he's like, what? I can't fight this thing. Shit. But, but of course he does fight the thing and he does eventually win. And this of course leads us into chapter two where a lot more happens. So now that the slave Daves has lost her family, she now has no owner, which apparently means she um, just gets sold off. Who, who gets the money from selling her off? Is there like next kin that gets them? Or is it just 
the town gets the money, and she's worried that she's going to be sold as a sex slave, because this is dark fantasy. And we need to make that clear. So naturally she approaches Iskil and Kaz, you know, wanting to go with them, because like, when she met them for like, two minutes, they seemed like nice people. So in order to prove that she won't be a burden to them, she steals a bunch of stuff and, and basically presents it as tribute for uh, getting to travel with them. It's like, ah, I got you nice stuff and I can, I can continue to steal stuff. You know, like my family taught me. My family that totally were not gypsies. So they agree to let her travel with them. We meet up with the animal sidekick, and as they're heading out, they're confronted by bandits who decide that they would like to rape the slave girl. I need to stop referring to her as slave girl. I know she has a name somewhere. Yeomi, that's it. So they they look at her and they're like, yeah. Yeah, I would like to tap that. It's a little bit confusing at the beginning because um, they're trying to refer to Kaz as a pretty boy, and I gotta be honest, I just don't see it. <laughs> Could have sworn that they were referring to Iskil because he's the, the young boy, right? But no, they're referring to Kaz, the seven foot tall buff dude with a beard. I thought that was a little bit strange. Uh, they take it a step further by <laughs> having the evil guy say, Why are you so fucking pretty? You look like a whore I raped in Gunska. You ugly. But anyway, they win against uh, the bandits, and the last guy is begging for his life, so naturally Iskul wants to spare his life. Another one of the bandits tries to ambush them while they're distracted, and that is when they are saved by a shaman, who is also someone that Kaz knows from his childhood, and her name is Ragna. Now I gotta be honest, when she was introduced, say, you know, you look at her, you can tell she's some sort of fantasy race as well. I just assumed she was also Dev. Anyway, we have another uh, fantasy race who just so happens to also look like a demon. <laughs> They both look like demons. I don't know what's going on here. But she is very clearly supposed to be the love interest for Kaz, and that is the whole hook of Fiendish 2.5, is it's kind of telling their story together, and you get some, like, backstory on the romance there. As much as I do like romance, I know that 2.5 is not exactly going to have a conclusion to their romance, as, you know, even this book does not really have a conclusion to their romance. It's not like they're dating when Fiendish starts, and I guess that's part of the idea of calling that chapter 2.5 as opposed to calling it 3 because if it were necessary information to the story then it would have been woven into the story instead it's a spin-off story but yeah that is where we end fiendish chapter 2 and now you are all caught up with the series as i mentioned before the first book really flies by as as far as what actually happens in it it's mostly focused on this you know monster hunting and it's kind of slow, easy pace. Uh, really, chapter two also feels like it's kind of a, a slow, easygoing pace, you know. It, it kind of sets up atmosphere of the world. Although sometimes I feel like maybe we focus too much attention on some of the wrong things. And I do wonder if there are better scenes that we could have had within the books if other scenes were cut out. Like, did we really need that scene of Yomi stealing the baby? Did we really need a, a scene dedicated to her first time training with Kaz? I mean, we could have that scene anywhere in the series, really. You could just have it in, like, book three and just establish that they've always been training in the background or just show them in the middle of training one day and have him be like, oh, we've been training all this time and you still can't beat me or something like that. And basically that line alone just establishes that they've always been training. And do we really need an animal sidekick? No. I know, it's completely unnecessary, but I get why you put it there. Animal sidekicks do sell merch. The art in Fiendish, both 1 and 2, is incredibly well done. And I do also love the, the life that the coloring puts to it. I think one of the unfortunate things about uh, my copy of book 1 is that it is damaged. It just it came damaged. There's not only one, but two pages in which it looks like the page just got caught in the printer and was ripped out or something. The words are blurred and there are these prominent 
white wrinkles and scratches on the pages. It's just for two pages, but it is very distracting and it makes it a little bit harder to read said pages. Despite the fact that it is harder to read the pages, I did catch a typo on one of those pages. Something. There's an L instead of an I there. But yeah, you know, overall, I do like Fiendish. I feel like it's a good start to what could be a nice dark fantasy series. I like the characters, and I think they have a, an interesting adventuring party cast put together. I do kind of wonder about the, uh, the two, both women that they're traveling with are not human women. They're like some sort of fantasy race who both look kinda demonic. Not sure how I feel about that. I do like my little romance on the side. Over the years, I've become a little bit more biased over romances between two different species. I know, I know some people are really into it. Really into it. As the years go by, I am less and less tolerant of it. Did I mention I'm on Freerun's side? Yeah, I really liked, um, how we ended off chapter two by talking a little bit about Eskel's curse and how it can, you know, potentially land him in a lot of trouble in the future because he empathizes even with evil people. I think that's a very mature topic and I think it's a really interesting character to just have thrown there. Obviously, I'd like to know more about Kaz and more about his love interest as well, since she literally is just now being like thrown into the mix. So I'm excited to read chapter three when that comes out. So thanks for watching along on this brief fiendish review. I would like to, in the future, do more indie comic reviews. I've struggled with it specifically because I want my videos to promote my own comics, but I want to also make videos promoting other people's comics that I think are also very good out there. Other indie creators who are making stuff. So people know that it's it's not just me making everything. It's a lot of people out there are making like really good comics. I think in the future I have an idea going forward on how I can accomplish, you know, promoting my own stuff while also using the channel to promote indie stuff. And I'll keep you updated on that as that develops. But thank you for watching. Check out burningstarcomics.net and check out out fiendish if you haven't already links are in the description like the video if you did enjoy let me know your own thoughts on this series so far down in the comments and i'll see you next time guys bye Program restart.